Welcome back to the VxRail Deployment Flexibility Series. In this third episode, we'll cover VxRail Dynamic Nodes. VxRail Dynamic Nodes allow customers to add to their VxRail footprint to address increasing workloads while they continue to benefit from a common VxRail operating model for a simplified LCM experience. Dynamic Nodes are compute-only nodes or basically ESXi hosts without storage. When combined, dynamic nodes form a vSphere cluster. Primary storage comes from an external host, making a vSAN license unnecessary. Mixing VxRail dynamic nodes and vSAN nodes is not supported, though data stores can be shared. VxRail dynamic nodes can get their primary storage either as shared from vSAN HCI mesh or from Dell PowerStore T, PowerMax, Dell Unity XT, and on VxRail 7.0.300 or higher from PowerFlex storage arrays. External primary storage allows customers to scale compute by adding dynamic nodes independently of storage. More dynamic nodes can be added to existing clusters or new clusters can be deployed to increase compute power pulling storage from the same resource. VxRail HCI system software runs VxRail Dynamic Nodes 2. If this software is new to you, be sure to check out the VxRail Advantage video to learn more. The LCM experience for Dynamic Nodes is the same as for VxRail with vSAN nodes. Dynamic Nodes are available with the latest VxRail hardware platforms. At launch time, several models are supported, including the E660F, P670F, V670F, as well as the newer VE660 and VP760 models. The VxRail Manager VM will run from the external primary storage. All configurations, except for internal storage, are available for dynamic nodes. Let's take a look at three different use cases starting with vSAN HCI Mesh. With VxRail Dynamic Nodes, VxRail can now operate as both the server cluster and client cluster. Standard VxRail clusters with vSAN can share their data stores with VxRail Dynamic Node compute-only clusters. A vSAN data store can connect to up to 128 hosts. A Dynamic Node cluster can also connect to multiple data stores. A VxRail administrator can use storage policies to select the appropriate data store in vCenter based on the customer's preferred data services and protection levels. Similarly, Dynamic Nodes with vSAN HCI Mesh offers customers the ability to scale their storage and compute separately based on workloads and use cases. There is also a cost benefit where customers can potentially save on vSAN license costs by using remote data stores for their applications. This is a viable use case, but keep in mind that there will be performance degradation when using a remote data store compared to a local one. Above all, VxRail HCI system software remains the common factor. VxRail users can count on the same operational simplicity for their LCM experience across VxRail vSAN and Dynamic Node clusters. Next, let's talk about using Dynamic Nodes with Dell External Storage Arrays. We'll also discuss VCF on VxRail and non-VCF deployments because the details are so similar. For external storage, there are four supported array types, PowerStore T, PowerMax, Unity XT, and PowerFlex. The first three SAN options support NVMe over TCP, FC, NFS, and ISCSI protocols. PowerFlex support was added with 7.0.300 and supports NVMe over TCP and a proprietary TCP-based protocol. Storage provisioning and the use of the storage array data services are not managed by VxRail. Customers can provision external fiber channel storage with VMFS as the primary storage. Storage administrators can continue to use their respective management clients or the VSI plugin 
if they want an integrated vCenter management experience. In a standardized VMware environment, the use of VSI can centralize more management onto vCenter as VxRail clusters are managed through the VxRail Manager plugin. For fiber channel attached storage, 16 GB and 32 GB SAN fabrics are supported through Connectrix MDS and Brocade SAN switches. Fiber channel HBAs are needed for each node. LCM of external storage arrays and fiber channel switches are separate from VxRail, except in the case of PowerStore storage with dynamic apps on. A single storage array can connect to multiple dynamic node clusters for independent scaling of compute and storage. The virtual addition of PowerPath is supported for multi-pathing capabilities to the storage array. This is supported with PowerStore, PowerMax, and Unity XT on fiber channels, ISCSI, or NVMe over fiber channel protocols. Now, keep in mind, VxRail dynamic nodes and external storage arrays are sold separately. So while both would be supported by Dell, it wouldn't be as an integrated solution. The VxRail support will remain engaged with you through resolution of the issue. A third use case is VCF on VxRail. The independent compute structure of dynamic nodes makes these a fantastic option for these workloads because additional compute power is easy to deploy anywhere it's needed while continuing to benefit from the data services provided by Dell SAN storage. A much talked about feature in VxRail 7.0.450 is the PowerStore LCM integration in VxRail Manager. This is a dynamic apps on solution the name for a VxRail dynamic node cluster using PowerStore as its primary storage. The benefit of this PowerStore LCM integration is to further centralize the management experience of PowerStore with the VxRail cluster. This allows the VMware administrator to add PowerStore lifecycle management to the set of operations that can be initiated from vCenter server UI for PowerStore Manager. Let's first discuss what's needed for a dynamic apps on solution with PowerStore LCM integration. First, you need a VxRail dynamic node cluster running 7.0.450 or later, a PowerStore T array running a 3.0.0 or later, and the virtual storage integrator plugin VSI version 10.2 or later. With those in place, a user can manage VxRail and PowerStore from vCenter using the VxRail Manager and VSI plugins. This concludes this video about VxRail dynamic node clusters. These clusters are a fantastic way to add compute power to existing storage arrays or to create clusters with independent storage and compute resources. Dynamic node clusters are also an excellent choice to power VCF on VxRail workloads. I hope you'll join us next time for our discussion of VxRail satellite nodes. Thanks for watching.